The Emirates Mars mission has recently entered orbit around the Red Planet. In this video, we're going to do an overview of the spacecraft, look at some of the main goals of the mission, and why it's hard to enter orbit around another planet. So let's talk about that. What is the Emirates Mars mission? The spacecraft was given the name Al Amal, or translated into English as Hope. And this mission has a main scientific objective to study the climate on Mars. Now, from a larger scientific perspective, Mars is a cold, barren, desert like of a planet. However, vast evidence has pointed towards a history where Mars was once blue, potentially covered in lakes and maybe even oceans of liquid water. But there's a problem with modern day Mars. The atmosphere is too thin for liquid water to even exist on the surface. For example, if you were on Mars with a spacesuit right now and you opened a bottle of water, all of that water would just evaporate instantly because the atmospheric pressure is too low for liquid water to even exist. Which means that if Mars once had liquid water on its surface, its atmosphere needed to be a lot bigger. Now, spacecraft in the past have studied the atmosphere and how it's slowly been shrinking over time. However, the HOPE mission, or the HOPE spacecraft, is aiming to understand more of the current climate, how the upper and lower parts of the atmosphere interact with each other, and how that might play a role in why Mars' atmosphere is so thin now. However, there are many other weather patterns that happen on Mars that we have very little knowledge of or understand why they happen such as seasonal dust storms, the formation of clouds of water ice, and even the fact that sometimes hydrogen and oxygen can just leave the planet entirely. So the HOPE spacecraft has been related primarily to as a weather satellite around Mars, with the ability to monitor essentially the entire climate of the planet every single day, which is pretty fascinating. Now, it's able to do this with three instruments that are on board. And these instruments are going to be monitoring the lower and upper atmosphere from a farther distance from previous orbiters. And I'll get to that in just a little bit. But if you want a different video going into a lot more detail on the instruments on board the HOPE spacecraft, let me know in the comments below. But let's go ahead and talk about a timeline of the mission and how it's gotten to where it is right now. The mission is through the United Arab Emirates Space Agency. And the initial idea for this mission came about in 2013, where it was announced to the public in 2014 alongside the name. Now, there are multiple reasons as to why they are pursuing this mission other than the scientific objectives. Hence the name HOPE, they are trying to inspire the next generation of students. And additionally, this mission is hoping to bring economic prosperity to the region. But there's also another reason. In 2017, the United Arab Emirates announced their plan for Mars 2117 which is a century-long plan in which by 2117, they hope to have an entire city on Mars, with the first humans reaching Mars in 2037, or roughly 16 years from now. But specifically to the HOPE spacecraft, this is the first interplanetary mission to come out of an Arab nation. And by interplanetary mission, I mean essentially leaving the Earth's gravity, which is a really big deal. Additionally, the spacecraft is officially ran out of the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center. The team working on the HOPE spacecraft have collaborated with partners from across the globe, including universities and laboratories in the United States, as well as India's space agency ISRO and Japan's space agency JAXA. Now, it took roughly five years to design and develop this spacecraft. In 2020, the spacecraft was completed and sent to Tanegashima Space Center in Japan to be attached to JAXA's H-2A rocket. Now to put this into perspective, an H-2A rocket is slightly smaller than a Falcon 9. However, it's still able to send the spacecraft to Mars. So on July 19th of 2020, the HOPE spacecraft launched from Earth, beginning the seven month journey to Mars, which leads us to about now. But if you're watching this video around the time that it's coming out, then you might have heard about the HOPE spacecraft in the news. But what exactly happened on February 9th? The HOPE spacecraft successfully entered orbit around Mars. But why is this such a big deal? Is this something that's easy to do? And the quick answer is no, it's not easy to enter orbit around another planet. 
but let's figure out why. As the spacecraft is approaching Mars, it's traveling at around 120,000 kilometers per hour. And you might think that because of gravity, once it gets close to the planet, the planet will pull it in and it'll be able to enter an orbit very easily. But it doesn't exactly work like that, and you might know it if you've played Kerbal Space Program before. But let's talk about why. We're not going to talk about how you actually get to Mars or even get on a trajectory that gets you close to Mars, but rather something called an escape velocity. Anything that has mass has an escape velocity, including the Earth, the Sun, the Moon, Mars, even you and me. And the escape velocity is essentially how fast you need to go to completely overcome gravity. So if a spacecraft is going at the speed of the escape velocity, then it'll leave the thing forever. So for example, if you're around Earth and you want to leave Earth forever, you just have to go the escape velocity. So you speed up and leave. The same for the sun. If you want to leave the solar system, you go at the sun's escape velocity and just leave. Now it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the simplest sense. So how does this relate to the HOPE mission? Well, when it was launched from Earth, they wanted to go to Mars. They never wanted to come back to Earth. So they had to reach Earth's escape velocity. Then, as it departed and traveled throughout the solar system, they started to arrive towards Mars. And upon arrival, as we talked about, it's going incredibly fast, 120,000 kilometers per hour. So as it starts to get closer to the surface, it needs to assess how fast Mars's escape velocity is. And in this case, it's 18,000 kilometers per hour. So in order to be captured around Mars, it needs to be going 18,000 kilometers per hour or less. So as it gets closer and closer to Mars, it starts to turn its thrusters on in the opposite direction as it's traveling so that it can start to slow down. And over the course of 30 minutes, it will slow the spacecraft down to how fast? 18,000 kilometers per hour, precisely what it needs to be captured by Mars's gravity. Now what happened if the thrusters didn't work or they didn't fire on time? Well, if something were to happen where multiple thrusters went down and they weren't able to slow down fast enough, then the spacecraft would still be going faster than the escape velocity and would leave Mars with probably no chance to ever come back. Meaning that the mission only has one real chance at entering orbit around Mars. That was a really fun fact that I want to include about escape velocity is have you ever wondered what makes a black hole a black hole? Why does light not emit from it? And it's because the black hole is so massive or weighs so much that its escape velocity is greater than the speed of light. So not even light can escape it, which is why it's called a black hole. So that's a fun fact. So over the past week, the UAE's HOPE probe and China's Tianwen-1 mission have both entered orbit around Mars. So that's pretty exciting. And the Perseverance landing, which is coming up shortly, you might be wondering, well, is it going to enter orbit around Mars? And no, rather, it's just going to go directly into the Martian atmosphere. So it never has this intermediate orbit that it stops at. So that's just a slightly different scenario. So now let's get into some of the specifications of the spacecraft itself. It's roughly 2.3 meters wide and 2.9 meters tall, or roughly the size of a small car. And there are two solar panels that when they are deployed are about eight meters wide. So this is a rather large spacecraft that is orbiting around Mars. The entire spacecraft weighs 1,350 kilograms, where 800 of those kilograms is fuel, hydrogen to be more specific. Now there are six thrusters on board the spacecraft that are used to slow it down upon arrival at Mars and to also make sure that it's in the right orbit that it's trying to achieve. And in this image, you can see on the left-hand side, there is a large 1.85 meter antenna that is used to communicate back with Earth as it is orbiting the red planet. Now, as the spacecraft has recently gotten to Mars, it's not in its ideal orbit yet. It still needs to make sure that it's reached its science orbit. Now, usually for orbiters around Mars that are trying to image the surface, they try and get as close as possible roughly 400 kilometers above the surface to get high resolution images of what's going on on the surface of Mars. However, since the HOPE spacecraft is monitoring the climate or the weather patterns on Mars, it actually wants to be pretty far away. In fact, its closest distance to Mars will be 20,000 kilometers above the surface, whereas its furthest distance is going to be 43,000 kilometers. So it really is pretty far from Mars. 
However, this distance allows the spacecraft to monitor the entire planet at a time, basically to get 24-7 monitoring of the weather patterns, which is why this spacecraft is referred to as a weather satellite on Mars. And here around Earth, some of our critical weather satellites that track hurricanes are 35,000 kilometers overhead. So it's not something new to put a weather satellite far away from a planet. In fact, it can be very advantageous depending on what you're trying to learn. Another interesting fact is if we compare the elliptical orbit of the HOPE spacecraft to the circular-ish orbit of Deimos, or Mars's outermost moon, we could see that the HOPE spacecraft will get rather close to Deimos. So it's interesting to keep in mind whether or not HOPE will actually be able to encounter the moon and take some images of the moon itself. Now, I should mention that the scientific instruments on board aren't necessarily designed to study Deimos, at least in that proximity, but it will be interesting to see if they're able to get any data about the small moon of Mars. Now, the mission as a whole is supposed to last for two years, and maybe by the end of the mission, it will be extended for another two years. But two Earth years is roughly the amount of time of a Martian year. So it's trying to understand a global climate pattern of Mars over an entire Martian year. Last but certainly not least, the United Arab Emirates Space Agency will share the data they receive from the mission with over 200 organizations all across the globe. So it'll be fascinating to see what findings we're able to make about Mars's climate, the dust storms, the icy clouds, and so much more. I can't wait to see the results of this mission. The last thing I want to mention is as of yesterday, this channel has surpassed 20,000 subscribers. I'm so happy to see this many people that are passionate about space exploration and the incredible missions that are happening all across the globe to try and learn more about space exploration and a future where humanity is reaching for the stars. Now, 20,000 subscribers is already surpassing Mars's escape velocity, so there's so much more that we have to learn about. And if there's anything that you would like to learn about regarding space exploration, astrophysics, or just these missions in general, let me know in the comments below, and I'd be happy to take a look at what you all are interested in terms of the content that I'm creating. But with all of that being said, thank you again for the incredible support, whether it's just watching the videos, being subscribed, or enjoying the content as a whole. I love to see every single one of your comments, the suggestions, the questions, and what you have to offer. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.